Hey everybody, Sis here from Sis Handmade. I want to talk to you about these awesome kits, the mini loom kit. And here's a completed project. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, this is 100% silk here in the middle. This is a clear quartz crystal and two, lo two looms that are attached. This is basswood. So this is what you'll finish. In your kit, you're going to get everything that you need, so you don't need to worry about even something like scissors. You get these really awesome unicorn scissors. You'll get a tapestry needle, so you know it's the right size. And it has a blunt tip, so you don't have to worry about poking yourself with it, which is awesome. You'll get one of these crystals. You get the orange calcite crystal, clear quartz, or the aquamarine and then you'll get a selection of 100% silk yarns five of them are worsted weight so we have here the Rocky Shores colorway the Mermaid at Sea colorway watercolors which is a classic this looks great and the cupcake yarn and the vibrant tulips. You also get this lace weight 100% silk yarn that you're going to use for the warp and these five selections you'll use for the weft. I'm excited to get started with you. Let's go. So here we are. We have all the contents of our kit out and about. We're going to pull out these two looms. We're going to need both of them. Tapestry needle and the lace weight silk. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to thread the lace weight silk and the tapestry needle. You can put a little bunny ear on the top just to make it a little easier to thread it. And you're just going to thread the needle so that the yarn is in a sense in half but you're going to want a little bit of a tail at the end. You're going to want about a foot or so. So at the end you're going to leave a little over a foot. And you're going to vise the two looms together. You use your thumb and your index finger and you're going to want it so that the holes shine through. And you're going to take your tapestry needle and you're going to thread it through the back up through the hole through both looms. And you're going to leave a tail, about a, a foot. It doesn't matter if you're right or left handed. If you're left handed, you just go to the left. If you're right handed, go to the right. You're going to count 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Then you're going to thread your needle through the top to the back, through both holes of the loom. And then I'm holding the yarn so it doesn't slip all the way through with my index finger. So you're just going to want to hold that there and let the yarn be a little bit snug so it's almost like spongy in a sense. Then you're going to come up to the right or the left and you're going to come up to the next side on the top and you're going to cross it over on the left and you're going to go down. And you're going to repeat the same cycle. Let me show you that again. You come up through the back here, up. It's a very repetitive process. You don't want to take your time. Your instinct might be that you want to want to go fast, but if you go fast, you might make a knot. So take your time, and you come up through the down, through the back, in the same repetitive fashion. You're going to want to, at some point, give yourself a little bit more yarn by pulling up. See if I can show that to you in the space, just so you have a little bit more room. 
we continue. Up. Pull a little tight. You keep rotating it around, repeating that same pattern. This is the warp part of your weave. This is the structural component of the weave. It's what holds everything together. So you're vicing these two looms together. You're coming up through the back. And you're essentially having a warp on the top and the bottom. That's what you want to do. Because when, the next step after this is we're going to be putting a crystal inside. So that's why we have a warp on the top and the bottom. And this process gets easier because the yarn becomes shorter and you've repeated this pattern a few times, you start to get some muscle memory, and you can just start to go with the flow and get into a rhythm. And as you're working, you can even start to set an intention for yourself. I know for me, what I'm working on is my communication. So here we are. We're coming up at the end. Here we are. We've got, you'll notice, there's one warp missing between these two. But there's, they're all fixed here. So you're just going to take the yarn. You're going to finish off that one warp. And you're going to see a small V here. You're going to come up through that V can be a little tricky because the needle is a little shorter than the loom but you can do it pull up through pull a little bit tight and what you can start to do is work on the weft by starting to weave in a tabby like fashion you can go under one, over one, under one, over one, under, over. Pull it through. I would just do a few to start. Keep in mind you have one in the back too, so you have to kind of pull that as you're working. We're focusing the yarn in the center of the piece. I'm going to go around a few times, under, over, under, over, under, over. It's very repetitive. Over, under. And if you make a mistake, that is fine. It's, it's a woven piece, and sometimes you'll, if you skip one, You'll notice when you come around again, it might have a different pattern. That's okay. Imperfections really just add to the piece, and you can improvise more when those types of things happen. And that's really sufficient. And then you're going to flip it over. Take the needle off the thread for now. Flip it over to the other side. And you're going to repeat that same thing. You have that little tail there. You're going to pull it taut. You're going to... Put the yarn in the tapestry needle. That one warp thread is missing, so you're going to complete that now. Find that little V, sneak it underneath, pull it up through, and voila, there it is. You can start to weave. You can pick anywhere in your weave and you just go up and down all the way around a few times.
the side tends to be a little bit shorter so your yarn might fall out of your tapestry needle that's okay you can just reattach it move around one or two times is sufficient so that completes that step now you've gotten your warp in place you can go ahead and take your needle off of your loom grab your scissors and go ahead and just cut that extra string right off I should say yarn now you're ready to insert your crystal You just put that right in there, like so. And you really can position this anywhere. If you want to put it in the center, you can put it in the center. You're just going to have to pinch it in there, or you can let it fall. A lot of times, I don't know if you can tell, but it, it rests right there. It likes to balance, and I aesthetically like that, so I think I'm going to leave it towards the bottom. Then we're going to go ahead and grab our worsted weight yarn. And we're going to unravel that. And I wouldn't go too quickly because the quicker you, you might um, end up with a knot. So I go nice and slow to unravel it, making sure that it doesn't knot up. Thread your tapestry needle with the yarn. And this yarn is just so beautiful and it really emulates all the different colors of the chakra and the rainbow and light. So what we're going to do is we're going to hold the loom in our hands like this. We're going to take your, a finger in the back to hold the crystal in place and your thumb on the top. You're going to pick a spot on the bottom and you're going to come up through in between the two warps. There's two on the top and two on the bottom. So between those four warps. You're going to start to see these warps not as four in this inst instant, but two because we're going to start to crease these warps together as we embed the crystal inside. And I know this sounds complicated, but it's really the same pattern being repeated over and over again. So we're going to come up through those warps. And leave a little tiny tail. And then we're going to come down those same warps. And this is your weft. This is kind of like the, the muscles of your piece. And the warp is like the bones, in a sense. And so you're going to come up the next one. You're going to go either in a clockwise or counterclockwise manner. And then you go down both layers. And then you come up. And you come down. You want to try and keep the yarn as close to the crystal as you can. Come up and then go down between the warp. Now here you are at the center. You just want to make sure that as you continue, you're going over the center piece and we're on track to do that. You, know, you might notice some tension in your arms and in your fingers. Um, well, because we're trying to hold this crystal inside, we're trying to make the 
impossible possible, but it is possible and it is going to start to get easier and you'll start to notice that you might even get into um, a flow state as you're working. Because it's really the same pattern that you're repeating over and over. You're going up and then you're going down. You're handling the yarn, making sure that it doesn't get knotted up. So that might dictate the pace of how fast or slow that you're going. You know, start to set the intention of your piece. Start to think about um, an area of your life that you would like to improve or you'd like to focus on. This is a tabby weave. It's just going up and down, over and under, repeating that pattern over and over again. If you have an idea of a different technique, you certainly can experiment with that for the purposes of this project. We're just going to stick with the tabby weave. So I'm getting to be close to going around once. And then you'll start to notice now that I'm around once, this time around, instead of going over, we're going under. So it's the opposite direction now. And the more and more you do that, you start to see a pattern emerging. Kind of reminds me of a ripple in the ocean or a shell. Or even maybe even bark on a tree. And this silk is so beautiful to work with. It's so soft. I noticed my tail got caught in the weave. You can just pull that out periodically when that happens. And we made it around. This is probably the hardest part. It's starting to get easier at this point. And what you'll start to see is this variegated yarn takes on its own rhythm and you'll start to see its own pattern emerging as you work through and that's really exciting. You know, no two pieces are going to look the same. Every piece is going to be unique. We might be doing the same exact pattern. But there's going to be something about it that's going to be different. This particular crystal that is being used is the orange calcite, orange calcite, 
and it's great to spark creativity. So maybe I'll have some sort of creative thought as I'm working on this new idea. You just keep repeating the same thing. You go over and then under, over and then under. And if you notice, in this case, my crystal still has room underneath. But if you don't have enough room to keep going in a circular pattern, you can change the direction. If you want to come back this way now, you can. And I can show you that now. We can change direction and it's very common that your piece as you're working on it might get knotted up so just keep that in mind so now I'm going back in the same direction that I just came in just to give you an example of how you can change correct direction and I just love the the analogy with life. I mean, how often times have we thought we were going to go in one direction and then we end up going in another? It's it's completely organic and it's part of nature and it's just part part of being human. You have to remember that we all go through those types of things. Ah, so the color is starting to change. Getting this beautiful bright pink color. So you'll do that several times. Getting further along. There's just some things that are starting to irk me that I just want to talk to you about. Um, in the back there's a few. I got a little loop here. I'm not too happy about how that looks. My yarn broke in between and that can happen. I just picked up and kept going. Now I have two little pieces of yarn that are sticking out the back. And then this other piece from when I first started it's just kind of hanging out too. So it's really a quick solution. Um, what you're going to do is you're going to take your scissors and you're simply just going to cut them off. And I just think it looks so much better now. And then I'm just going to keep going. So I want to have positive thoughts. I don't every time I see that or touch that, I don't want to think, oh, I don't like how that looks. So I'm just going to take care of it and I'm just going to cut it right off. It's that easy. I'm just going to continue around. And when I get to this other side, I Rather than keep going in the same direction, I'm just going to go back in the opposite direction. Right here. Now I'm going to come start coming back around this way. And you can really stop at any time. If you like having light pass through the top, you can call it a day and say, you know what, I really like that. Or you can keep going until it's all the way full. I'm all about the yarn, so I really want to see it to the end. And 
fill in this negative space with yarn. Right there, the yarn broke off. I'm just going to say it was ready for me to be done. Simply cut it off. So thank you so much for doing this project with me. I had a great time here at Darn Good Yarn. I'm Sarah, this is Handmade. Check me out on Instagram. And I just wanted to show you what we finished today in the studio. So this one here has the clear quartz and it has the watercolor colorway. I think it looks beautiful. And I can say even if you use these same two combinations, it's not going to look the same. Each one is going to be unique and true to you. So it's a real true self-expression. Here we have the tulip colorway, which I think is lovely. I love the way the purple wraps around the orange citrine crystal. It's absolutely beautiful. And here we have the aquamarine with mermaid by the sea colorway. So here's some examples of what yours might look like when you're done. So thanks again for having me here. 